Attacks on lawyers have become a frequent feature in Sri Lanka. Ten UN experts who issued a joint statement on the unabated impunity in the country expressed concern over acts of intimidation and death threats to lawyers, journalists and human rights activists. On the 30th of January 2009, at around 10 p.m., the office of a lawyer who had appeared for a complainant in a bribery case and a torture case was subjected to an arson attack. The office was seriously damaged by the fire, and the client's files, the record of title deeds of many persons, and many reference books used by the lawyer and his wife, who was also a lawyer, were destroyed. Thus, the lawyer, Mr. Amita Aryaratna, observed was a punishment for appearing, particularly in one case where a man named Sugathni Shanta Fernando made complaints about constant harassment by the police seeking bribes. Unable to endure the repeated demands for bribes, he complained to the Bribery Commission and higher police authorities. The Bribery Commission, after conducting inquiries, filed a case against a police inspector for soliciting bribes. The filing of this case was followed by repeated harassment to Nishanta by many police officers working in the Nagambo area. The police officers constantly demanded that he should not go to court and give testimony. When the officers failed to intimidate the civilian, about 50 of them went to his house and after surrounding the house, assaulted Nishanta, his wife, Sandamali, and two young children. They were severely assaulted and the young daughter was molested. Nishanta, on the advice of his lawyer, made a complaint to the Supreme Court by way of a fundamental rights application. The result was an increase in the threats to his family and himself. A group of persons sent by the police threatened Nishanta and Sandamali to withdraw the fundamental rights application within 24 hours, or they would be assassinated. Nishanta sought witness protection from the Inspector General of Police, and other Sri Lankan authorities. However, no protection was provided, and on the 20th of September, he was assassinated next to his young son in broad daylight. Sandamali sought protection for herself and her children. However, she did not receive any such protection. The lawyer was Nishanta's lawyer as well as his family. He received death threats on the 26th of September, because he appeared for the widow at the inquest inquiry into the murder of Nishanta. Amita complained to the Bar Association, who in turn requested that the Inspector General of Police make inquiries and grant protection. However, no effective action was taken by the police. On the 27th of September, Amita went to the Nagombo police station on official business. There he was assaulted and threatened with death three times by a police officer named Bandara in the presence of several other officers. Despite requests to make a complaint, the officer in charge at that time did not comply. Three days later, Mr. Ari Ratne's office was gutted by fire. He and his wife had been inside the office just minutes before and had just left it for a moment. Despite help from neighbours, it took considerable time to extinguish the flames with water and sand and there was extensive damage. The lawyer and human rights organizations in the country and outside have called on the police to inquire into the matter. The Bar Association of Sri Lanka has also made repeated requests for investigations. However, no one has yet been arrested or produced before the court for the causing of this arson attack. Given the background to the case, there is reasonable suspicion that the police officers who are suspected of the murder of Sudath Nishanta Fernando are behind this arson attack.